Hi there, and welcome to the second lesson of waves. Today, we're going to look at how we can manipulate the wave equations. So, you're going to know a basic method for measuring the speed of sound and how to increase its accuracy. We're also going to look at applying and rearranging the following wave equations. Distance is speed times time. Wave speed, frequency times wavelength. And finally, one we looked at last time, period of a wave equals 1 over frequency. So let's start with how we can actually measure waves using the speed. So first equation, distance travelled is speed times time, you probably remember from key stage 3. We can put it into a triangle here, because speed times time needs to go at the bottom, so distance goes at the top. So let's use this to answer this question. A wave travels 200 metres in 5 seconds. Calculate the speed of the wave in metres per second. Now if you can't remember the equation for speed, it's really good to look at the units. Because what that means is metres per second. And per means divided by. So you've got metres divided by seconds. Of course metres is distance, divided by seconds is time. So we've got speed is distance divided by time. You could also use your triangle. Speed is distance divided by time. And that just gives you 200 divided by 5 is 40 metres a second. Another way you can do this question is by quoting the equation you know first and instead of rearranging, putting your numbers in. Now we want speed equals, so it's being multiplied by 5. To get 5 to the other side, all you do is you do the opposite of multiplication, which is division, and you take the 5 down to that side. So we've got 200 divided by 5 equals 40 metres a second. Pause the video and have a go at this one yourself. So we want time this time. So covering up time, it's distance divided by speed which equals 495 divided by 330, which gives us 1.5 seconds. You can do it the other way by quoting the equation first, putting your values in. We want time to be the subject of the equation, so we need to get 330 to the other side. It's multiplying, so we do the exact opposite, which is divide and take it down to the other side, and we get exactly the same answer. Now the next thing is how do we actually measure the speed of sound? This is a practical you need to know. Now the first method could be this. You've got somebody at the other end of the stop clock and you've got somebody with some wooden blocks at this end. If they clap those wooden blocks, because light travels so fast, about eight times around the world in one second, you actually see them do it instantly. But the sound takes time to get there. So the person, watches the person with the wooden blocks, starts the stopwatch when they see the blocks touch and stops it when they hear the sound. Now this isn't very accurate because you've got reaction time, which is quite significant. Here are some of the readings that I got when I did this experiment. If you have a look through, one of them is definitely an anonymous result or an outlier, and that is this one. So we're not going to include that one. Pause the video and calculate the mean time. So the mean time is the four pieces of data added together, divided by four. Now, that on your calculator will give you 0.6925. We can't record to that accuracy because we only measured to a hundredth of a second. So that rounded up gives us 0.69 seconds. And of course speed is distance divided by time. The distance was 200 metres, so that gives us 200 divided by the time 0.69, which is 290 metres per second. That's actually a lot slower than the actual result, which should be 330, because we've got reaction time. That's the time it takes to actually see someone start and see someone stop. 
So reaction time is a random error. You're not going to make it the same every single time. One of the key errors. So how can we make it more accurate? Well, first of all, we need to increase the distance that we are measuring over. And one key way of doing this is using the echo system. So this time, we've got 480 metres. One person makes the sound. That, the other person starts a stopwatch when the sound is made. The sound travels 480 metres this way, reflects and travels 480 metres back, and the person stops the stopwatch. Now, of course, the distance travelled is therefore twice 480, so that's a much larger distance. Pause the video, work out your mean time, then the uh, speed for sound, and see what difference it makes. So this time, we've got five sets of data. We haven't got any outliers, so I'm divided by five, and that gives me 2.88 seconds. I've only recorded it to a hundredth of a second. That gives me a speed of 333 metres a second. The actual speed of sound is around 330, so much closer. So, we've looked at the equation, wave speed is distance divided by time, and we've looked at how we can measure the speed of sound in air. Our next equation we're going to look at is this one. Period is 1 divided by the frequency, and we did a bit of that in our first lesson. So just to remind you what period is, this is the time it takes for a particle to do one full cycle or for one full wavelength to pass a point. Now on this, it works out in about two seconds. So what I've done is I've timed that and it's two seconds for one oscillation. That's the same as it takes the time for one wave to pass it, which means only half a wave passes that point in a second. So I make the frequency to be half. Notice that's one divided by the period. Another way of looking at period and frequency is to think about objects that are oscillating, like a pendulum. One oscillation is all the way over to the other side and back to the same point again. Just like a spring as well, you might see this in the exam, the spring is oscillating up and down, going all the way to the bottom and back to the top is one oscillation. So how can we use these periods in time, the time for one oscillation, to work out frequency? If the period is 0.5 seconds, how many you could fit in to a second? Well, one second divided by 0.5 is two, so I can fit two oscillations into a second. Supposing the period is only a quarter of a second. That's the time for one oscillation. I can fit four in, one second divided by 0.25. If it's going really fast, and it only takes a tenth of a second to do one oscillation, then one divided by 0.1 is 10. So I can fit 10 oscillations into a second, which is 10 hertz. This takes a lot longer. If it takes two seconds to do one oscillation, it's only going to do half an oscillation a second. And find the last one. If it takes four seconds to do one oscillation, then all I can fit into a second is one divided by four is 0.25. So you can see from this that actually frequency is one second divided by the period. And we write it without the second, it's just one over the frequency your exam, you get the equation period is 1 over frequency given to you in the equation sheet. If you want to rearrange it, put it in the triangle. 1 must go at the top and frequency must go at the bottom because it's 1 over 1 divided by frequency. So if I want the equation for frequency, frequency is 1 divided by the period. Have a go at these three questions by pausing the video, then I'll go through. So the first one, period is one over frequency, so that's 0.2 seconds. The next one, some of you might have been a bit puzzled with at first, because it doesn't look like you're given the frequency. 
but remember frequency is the number of waves past a point every second. We've got 10 waves every second, so the frequency is 10. Therefore, we can work out the period, one divided by frequency, one divided by 10 is 0.1 seconds. Finally, the last one, we've got 200 waves passing a point in 10 seconds, so the frequency will be 200 divided by 10, which is 20 waves per second. Now we've got the frequency, period is one over frequency, which is one divided by 20, which is 0.025 seconds. So we've looked at two out of our three equations. The third one is this, and I want you to help me derive it because I think actually learning equations without understanding where they come from makes it more difficult to actually use them and to be able to remember them. So, you're gonna now derive an equation yourself. What's the speed of the wave? Well, I've got a frequency of two hertz. That means this particle is doing two cycles a second or two wavelengths are passing it every second. I'm gonna make the wavelength three meters. Have a think, what do you think the speed is? Well, if we have a look, we've got two of these wavelengths passing that point in one second. Each wavelength is three meters, so six meters worth of wave past the point in one second, so it's traveling at six meters per second. Have a go at that one yourself by pausing the video, then I'll go through it. So this time, we've got five waves passing the point every second. Each wavelength is 10 meters, so I've got in all 50 meters of waves passing that point in one second, so it's gonna be traveling at 50 meters a second. Notice on both of these, to work out the speed, all you've done is you've done the frequency times by the wavelength. So that's the equation, and that's where it comes from, logic. So how do we rearrange this equation? Well, you can put it in the triangle there. If you have a look, wave speed has got to be equal to frequency times wavelength. If you want to rearrange it for frequency, cover up frequency and wave speed divided by wavelength because it's underneath like a fraction, four divided by two. Finally, wavelength, covering up wavelength, is wave speed divided by frequency. So let's apply this to a question. A wave traveling at a speed of 12 meters per second causes the boat to bob up and down at a frequency of 0.4 hertz. What is the wavelength of the water waves? So first of all, I'm gonna quote my equation. I need to rearrange it because I need to work out wavelength. So I'm gonna use this triangle. Wavelength is speed divided by frequency. 12 divided by 0.4 equals 30 meters, and that's it. Pause the video and have a go at these three questions. So the first one, we've got speed is frequency times wavelength, five times eight is 40 meters a second. The second one, I'm gonna first quote the equation. I'm not using a triangle this time, I'm using the other technique. I'm gonna put the values in. I now want frequency to be the subject of the equation, so it's being multiplied by 20, so I'm gonna do the opposite of multiply, which is divide, and 20 to the bottom there, and therefore I've got five divided by 20, which equals 0.25 hertz. Finally, the last one, again I've quoted the equation, I then put values in. This time I want to work out wavelength, so it's being multiplied by four, so I do the opposite, which is divide, and take four down to the other side to divide it, and I get 12 divided by four, which is three meters. So this is a classic type of question that the examiners will give you to test whether you really understand frequency and wavelength. I'm gonna read it with you, then I want you to pause the video and have a go yourself. The question is about the properties of waves. 
Bobby has kicked his ball into the middle of the pond. The ball is 10 metres from the edge of the pond. He tries to move the ball by making waves on the water with a stick. Bobby hits the edge of the pond with the stick. He makes six complete waves in 12 seconds. He counts exactly four complete waves between his stick and the ball. The waves are all equal. Pause the video, have a go at these, and I'll then go through them. So the first one is frequency. And you're not told frequency is something hertz. You've got to work it out. And you can't use the equation, wave speed is frequency times wavelength, because you don't know that information. But you do know six complete waves in 12 seconds. So frequencies, the number of waves in one second, be careful, it's six divided by 12, not the other way around, which is 0.5 hertz. The second one is what's the wavelength? Well, as you can see, you've got four wavelengths in 10 meters, so wavelength is just 10 divided by four, which is 2.5 meters. And now, of course, we've got both frequency and wavelength, we can now work out speed. So speed is frequency times wavelength, which is 0.5 times 2.5, which is 1.25 meters a second. So we all look at the electromagnetic spectrum in future lessons, but for the higher tier only, you'll probably need to be able to use the speed of light equation. So the speed of light is three times 10 to the eight meters a second. And all these electromagnetic waves travel at the speed of light. So what about this calculation? Calculate the wavelength of infrared with a frequency of 1,200 megahertz. Mega means a million, which is times 10 to the six. And reminded, the speed of infrared is three times 10 to the eight. So speed is frequency times wavelength. So three times 10 to the eight is 1,000 times 10 to the six times the wavelength. Take this down to the other side and you get wavelength is equal to. Now, of course, on your calculator, you have to press the times 10 to the x button to actually do the times 10 to the eight. And then divided by 1,200, again, the x button or times 10 to the button to put that in. And finally, that gives us 0.25 meters. Of course, we could have used V equals F lambda, which are the symbols for velocity, frequency, and wavelength. And that's a quicker way of doing it if you're confident at using those equations. So, let's just recap. We've looked at how we know the basic method for measuring the speed of sound and how to increase accuracy. We've looked at how we can apply and rearrange the following wave equations. Distance is speed times time. Wave speed is frequency times wavelength. And finally, period is one over frequency. Finally, I'm gonna leave you with the AQA specification points that we have covered uh, in this lesson. Next lesson, we are gonna look at how we can actually measure wave speed using a ripple tank and using frequency times wavelength, one of the required practicals.